These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. I like that, mate. I'd happily eat it all. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. That is, that is definitely Michelin star quality pasta. Definitely. Cooking doesn't get better than this. So far, this professional competition has discovered eight great chefs. In the semi-finals, each day will see two chefs battle it out against each other, but only one can go through. In a true test of their skill and commitment, David and Ryan will both have to cook service in a Michelin-starred restaurant. I'm a very ambitious person. Getting to the semi-finals is nowhere near enough for me, so still a lot of work to do, and just hopefully I can grab that, that finalist position. Knowing that I'm in the semi-finals of MasterChef is amazing. It's one of the biggest things I've, I've done in my life. I just can't believe I've got this far, and I just really can't believe that this is actually happening to me. The square is just off London's Berkeley Square. It's one of only 16 restaurants in Britain to be awarded the honour of two Michelin stars. It's a square. I want it to work here. Craziness. So, so exciting. Two star. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Today they are going to see what it takes to become a great chef. Philip Howard has held two Michelin stars at the square for more than 10 years. Age just 25, he became head chef of the square in 1991, with only three years of professional cooking behind him. Service here, please. After training with some of Britain's finest chefs, including the Roux family and Marco Pierre White, his acclaim is based on his elegant French cooking. I'm not in the slightest bit interested in tricksy and clever technique. All the food that we cook at the square is, without exception, based on how delicious can we make it. It's become a sort of benchmark in, in, in how to do things properly. You don't get to and remain a two Michelin starred chefs without exacting standards. He will not accept anything other than 100% perfection. I'm hoping to get people who've got a sense of urgency and a good palate, otherwise we've got nothing. So guys, the key thing about the food at the square is that the flavours are harmonious, the seasoning is immaculate, and that it's delicious to eat. So, anything that comes up to the past, if you haven't seasoned it correctly, if you haven't cooked it correctly, and it doesn't meet the, the, the criteria that, that, that we require, it will obviously come straight back and you'll have to produce it again. Let's crack on for the Today, cooking in a two-star kitchen is going to be really hard. It's going to be a, a tough challenge, um, but I'm going to take it in my stride and hopefully do my best. David has always given us great, gutsy, rustic flavours. He is a true talent. Taste-wise, very difficult to, to, to criticise. Full of flavour. I think it tastes glorious. I think it's lovely. <laughs> but presentation has always been an issue for David. It looks a bit... Messy. It looks sloppy. OK. David had serious timing issues in the quarter-final. Liver? Liver, sorry. sorry. 
I don't want to serve that liver, it's not, it's not good. You don't want to serve it? OK, then tell them. That will not be acceptable in a Michelin-starred restaurant. Phil Howard will not let him send out plates that are not complete. Today I'm going to improve on my timing issues, definitely, because I can't send out half dishes again. Cooking in a two-star Michelin restaurant for me is a dream come true. Very excited, almost shaking a little bit, but it's more from happiness than uh, nerves. Ryan is our youngest semi-finalist, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's at a disadvantage, because he can learn quickly. Grapefruit posset, garnished with bronze fennel. I don't really like that. It's a very brilliantly, innovatively crafted pudding, the like of which I've never had before. Ryan can deliver flavour, simple, great, gutsy flavours. He has had issues, though, with attention to detail. Sometimes that focus, that steely look can wander, and that is something he will have to address. What's he done? I mean, I've bitten into pig and cow, and all I can taste is rosemary. Phil Howard will not accept anything other than exemplary and perfect. Ryan will have to eradicate those silly mistakes. I think today I can definitely improve on my finesse and finishing uh, at a Michelin level. This is crucial. I definitely think I can raise my game. Only today will tell, it seems. Ryan and David now have only two hours to perfect Philip's dishes before service. The key ingredients are the quails, morels and the raw beans. Young father David will be in charge of the roast quail with a fricassee of spetzla broad beans and morels with parmesan jellies and a mushroom and truffle velouté. The first thing to do, which is going to be the spetzli, and basically it's, it's, a, it's a simple thing. Spetzler are a type of egg noodles from Germany. Now this is um, where the little bit of knack comes in. David will need to make the spetzler from scratch, which requires patience and skill. It's really, really, it's really hard. <laughs> it's good though, enjoying it. He'll then have to pan fry and roast the quail during service. The quail absolutely has to be pink. Can't be, can't be rare, but it must be pink and, and succulent. If it's undercooked, it'll come back. Must be seasoned each time, and there we have it. Roast quail with a fricassee of specially broad beans and morels. Get them like that every time, I'll be a happy man. Ryan's dish is brill on a medley of vegetables and morels served with crushed Jersey Royals and a parsley velouté. That is a magnificent piece of brill. His first task is to fillet the expensive brill without any wastage. I can't say enough times the important thing about the food of the square is that it has flavour with your piece of fish, just before it goes in the pan, you want to season it. If you season it two or three minutes before, the moisture is going to come out of the grill. You're going to put it in the pan, it's not going to caramelise. You just want it just to toast that underside. You don't want it to dehydrate the fish. That's absolutely lovely. Okay? So that, that is exactly how it's got to look. And if it's not like that, it's going to come straight back. Terrified, excited, you know, for me, there's never been a challenge in a lifetime like this. Absolute dream come true, but I've got such a high standard to meet. I just hope I raise my game today and really give Chef what he wants. It's midday and the customers begin to arrive. Customers will only walk through that door and pay what we charge if they are absolutely confident that they're going to get value for money. Nothing will ever leave this kitchen uh, in the square that's not fit to go to customer two-star standard. With two Michelin stars to uphold, Philip Howard is taking a massive risk allowing Ryan and David to cook in service. OK, 
Okay, so uh, two carvers, two eel, sweet, two brill. Yes, chef. Ryan's first off the mark with two orders for his brill and spring vegetables. Brill's in the pan. Brill's cooked, chef. The brill is ready, but with the possibility that a Michelin inspector could visit the restaurant at any time, Chef is suddenly nervous. I will dress the first few brill, OK? Just to, just to, so that you can just focus on the cooking. That there just needs to be a bit, a bit hotter. OK, it's fine, but it just needs to be a bit hotter. That needs a little bit more butter. Right, and just also make, just make sure that the butter doesn't go into the pan too early. It's just tried to burn a little bit on the fish, yeah? Wait. My first fish, uh, very mediocre. I can do a lot better, so uh, hopefully nail it on the next one. OK, start away, table 11. That is two quail and two eel. Yes, chef. David starts cooking his two quail. And those two quail are probably still in the oven or just about. Yes, chef. Yeah. He thinks the quail are ready, but chef is keeping a close eye. They rest it, rest it, nothing. Okay, this quail is under. I have to finish it. Okay. Can you just put another pan down on the stove, please? Once again, he decides to finish the dishes himself. Service, please. I don't cook well often, so I'm kind of just getting to it and just hopefully it'll be better or better next time. Start. Destination restaurants like The Square attract diners with experienced palates and ingrained expectations. Could I please go for the quail? I'm going to have the quail, sir. Quail, sure. Okay, so six covers, five quail, one eel. Chef? That's five quail, yeah? Yes, when you chef. take them out of the oven, can you make sure I can check them to make sure they're cooked properly, please? Yes, Chef. With Chef watching closely, David knows he can't afford to make any more mistakes. Let them colour. That one there is lovely. Don't rush them. Don't... don't... Meanwhile, Ryan has no orders and is desperate for a chance to prove himself. Wish I was a little bit more busy. Uh, Dave's getting a pound in over there. How are those quails doing? Two minutes, Chef. OK. We're going two lamb here, please. Let's table 40, yeah? Chef, you check these quails for me now, please. OK, David, those quails are spot on. Let's have them all like that, please. Yes, Chef. OK, service, please. 24, thank you. OK, main away, table 14. It was actually very lightly cooked, uh, the quail breast. It was actually, some people may say it's slightly underdone, but it was perfect. It was so, it just melted in your mouth. So nice, five carvers, two quail. One foie gras, one longestine. An hour into service and the restaurant is full. Wait, yes. 
The last two carvers, two quail, sweet, two brill. Chef. Three lamb, one brill. Yes. Okay. Finally, Ryan has orders and a chance to catch up with David. The competition is on again. So, Ryan, you dress the brill. Let me just check the garnish before we go. It's now Ryan's chance to complete his dishes without chef's help. Lovely. Very nice. OK, service, please. Let's go here. Three quail, sweet, two lamb, one grill. Yes. OK, so, David, you should have seven quail in the oven. Is that correct? I've got three there, one in the oven, one there, so that's five, and then there's two more going in now. Let's get that quail off the bone, yeah? You dress the whole thing start to finish, yeah? Yes, yeah? chef, yeah. Yes, chef. OK, make sure you don't forget the other quails in the oven, yeah? Yes, chef. David's coping with the volume, but an old problem is back. They come as pairs, yeah? Sorry. All the garnish is lovely, but the presentation, yeah, yeah. you've got to get that absolutely yeah. spot on, yeah? yeah. I've done the presentation, I just can't, I just can't, I don't know, I just can't get it right, like, I'm trying, I'm trying my best, but... It's... Service, let's go here, please. I really want to get it spot on for Philip and show him it's, it's, yeah, I can do it, make sure it's right. It's nearing the end of service, and it's David and Ryan's last chance to make an impression. Uh, Ryan, that's your last grill, mate. That's lovely, huh? Thank you, chef. David's dish sells out. We have no more quail. We'll change it to pigeon, yeah? Exactly the same garnish. Yeah. We'll roast the pigeon. Lovely. That's very nice. Thank you. Very nice. I'm really happy. I finally got it right. It's, uh, it's a good, good buzz. It's nice. OK, that's it. Thanks very much. That's the last time. That was good. We all, we all um, a bit of stormy water, but we, uh, we, made, we made it through. The chef has spent a lot of me, and I, I think I give him my best. Uh, a few hiccups, a little bit more dressing here, a little bit more colour on the fish. Apart from that, nothing major for me, so... Uh, very impressed with myself. I think I've done enough to impress Philip. Um, our quail dish went out. First few were a bit raw, but um, I rectified the situation and, and presented good dishes, I think. Ryan and David now have to compete in one more test, recreating Philip Howard's signature dish, lasagna of crab with a shellfish cappuccino and champagne foam. The signature dish that um, they are cooking, the lasagna of crab, does represent the square style of cooking very well. Crab claw meat and pureed scallop are combined with basil, lemon and cream to make a mousse. I feel all right. It's got to read the recipe and make sure it's perfect. The mousse must be light and the ingredients perfectly balanced so that each of the delicate flavours stands out. After being rolled out, the lasagna pasta should be blanched first, then cut into discs and layered with the mousse. There's lots of scope for problems with the pasta. Overcooked, undercooked, too thick, too thin, fall apart, forget to blanch it. Halfway through, David realises he's made a fundamental error. I've just, uh, I haven't cut my pasta. I thought the pasta was waiting there in the steam, but I've got to cook it in a pan of water first. He has to start all over again. Ah. The lasagna has to be made with, 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 all, with all care and attention to make sure it is, is immaculately formed. The dish is accompanied by a shellfish cappuccino and a rich champagne foam. The hardest thing about the dish is, is to, get the, uh, to get the sauces right. The crab is a delicate flavour and the scallop mousse is a delicate texture and it has to be supported by delicate and appropriate sauces. I'm really uh, 
a real stickler for how things should be presented. And ideally, I wanted the lasagna covered with much more of the shellfish sauce than a little bit of the champagne blue tin. I think what you've done here is you've you've rolled out your pasta. It's expanded, so they're too big for the mold. So that's why I've got this slightly roughly cash look. This this mix here, the, the mix of crab and scallops is is very delicate. It's exactly as it should be. The pasta is is is, is rolled out lovely and thin. It's just a bit tart and it's just a little bit too rich. Because you've got the, there's too much of the champagne sauce compared to the to, compared to the shellfish sauce. But otherwise, it's um it's very good. I wasn't really happy with my signature dish efforts today. Um, I felt like a deflated balloon. Um, not my best efforts. Totally lost instincts. Um, and I, I can do much better than this. The first uh, point is um, you've served all four when there should only be one. It would be a huge starter if it wasn't um, if, that, if that wasn't the case. Fantastically shellfishy, which is you know, one of the one of the absolute key things. If you'd put another gram of salt in there, it would be salty, okay. but it's not. It's absolutely. Spot on. The lasagna itself is just a bit solid. Okay. My signature dish wasn't perfect. I made an error putting too many passes on the, on the plate, but he said the flavours were great, uh, but it just needs to be more, a bit more refined. I think Tessin's did very well, actually. They're both slightly different. David is somebody who um, appears to probably have done more cooking Yes, I think he would be able to come in and work to a pace, but he certainly looks like somebody who's, who, who, who would have to be fine-tuned. After today, I go back to the kitchen. I'm going to really impress Michelle Rue Jr. and Greg Wallace. I'm going to really show them what, I, what I've learned, show them I can present food, and show them I can give them both presentation and flavour. Ryan, on the other hand, definitely looked like somebody whose natural level of refinement is perhaps slightly higher, but he wasn't pushed. For me, if I serve 100 diners and 99 are happy and one is not, that's a bad day for me. Call it hard, but that's just the standards I rise to. I think Ryan is probably the most likely guy to go through because of his refinement, but there's no two ways about it. Under pressure, anything can happen. And David, because of his, his, his ability to cook, um, he could quite easily put it out of the bag, and, but he's going to have to work on his refinement. Ryan and David now have to take everything they've learnt back to Master Chef HQ. Today, they have just one more chance to fight for a place in the finals. So many mixed emotions. I feel nervous, I feel pumped with adrenaline, excited. There's so much on the line. I'm just gonna go in there, get my head clear and just cook. And hopefully this will be enough for me to pull through. This is it for me. I've got to get through today. I feel confident, I feel buzzing, I feel excited. Getting through the next round of MasterChef is, is critical. So I just wanna get in there and cook. You have now experienced working in a Michelin-starred establishment. That experience 
should be enriching and inspiring. We now want to see that inspiration today with you two cooking the best food you have ever cooked. Two plates of food, one hour. Off you go, guys. I want to see all that they have learned in the Michelin starred kitchen. Precision, passion, the discipline, everything that needs to be there to make great food. My experience in the restaurant was fantastic. It's really brought my mind into sort of a new, a new light of presentation. Hopefully that will reflect today in showing my food. Fault-free cooking is not good enough. It has to be sensational cooking. Right, David, what are you cooking for us? I'm doing hand dive scallops with naja vegetables and fennel puree. In my main course, I'm doing seed breasted uh, Gressingham duck with savoy cabbage, chestnuts, parsnip puree and uh, fondant parsnips. So how are you going to elevate these dishes today? Just present them in a different way that I would usually present them and just show you that I can um, definitely present food the way you guys would like it. What are you putting into this competition, do you think? I'm putting everything into this competition. My heart and soul, my, my passion, my drive. I just feel like a changed man. I feel confident. I just want to assure you guys that I'm a great cook, a great chef. David, good luck with this. Thank you very much. Good luck, David. Thank you. David is cooking scallops for us with a fennel puree. Perfect marriage, that should really work well. As long as you don't go too strong on the fennel flavour, especially with the vermouth sauce, you're sort of overplaying the aniseed there, it's got to be balanced. For his main course, he's giving us a supreme of duck, basted with honey and some winter vegetables. All wonderful flavours, tried and tested. But first, can he give us great presentation and on time? These dishes are fine, but they can be found on menus everywhere, so there's no spark of difference here. He simply must get every single component part right. My food has always been quite safe, but today I'm stepping up the presentation quite a bit, and the flavours are going to be really good, so i just got to show Michelle and Greg that I can make it look beautiful on the plate. <laughs> Today it feels like I'm, I'm so close to being in that final and pushing my ability and my knowledge to my absolute top limits as I really want to win this competition. Ryan, what are you cooking for us? Today I'm going to be cooking you a starter of baked queenie scallops with sea urchin butter and a salad of Braeburn apple, snow pea shoots and beet shoots. Mmm. I've never eaten apple and scallop. Apple and scallop, um, I wanted some texture in there, nice sort of little, not crunchy as such, but just a bit of texture from the apple. And with the sea urchin butter, packing a bit of punch, um, should be a, a winning balance for me. And so, for your main course, Ryan? A couple of of uh, pan roasted butternut squash with purple sage oil and goat's curd. Mm. Pasta, obviously, is an Italian poor people's dish. How do you make that look like a Michelin starred dish? This is where hopefully my knowledge can, um, can come through today for me. I work in a rustic Italian, but hopefully I can push it to a fine dining level today. Well, yeah, but can you? Now, this is, this is um, the thing. I believe in myself, I believe in my own ability, and today that's what's pushing me. Today's a really big day for you, isn't it? Really big day. If I can get into those finals, just give you more of what I'm about, that's, that's the ultimate for me, really. Also, it's my birthday today, so extra steam in the engine, and uh, hopefully this will help me. Thank you, Ryan. Good luck, mate. Thank you. Ryan is preparing us an interesting dish with cream scallops, apple and sea urchin. I think that could work. I've never tasted those combinations before. Can Ryan bring all those unusual flavours together on his starter? He is then attempting a bowl of pasta with refinement. How do you do that? He's a very skilled chef if he can. 
I'm very worried about that because we need to see Michelin starred standard food, not just a bowl of pasta. No doubt in my mind, what Ryan is doing is extremely risky. I think today there's a lot on the line. I'm doing a very simple pasta dish, but it's all about executing the dish well. Could be so wrong if I if I didn't take all the McCann. Six minutes left. Focus, guys. Come on, come on. Finish up, finish up, finish up, finish up. You've got 60 seconds, guys, and we're going to call time. Last 20 seconds. Come on. Time's up. David is hoping to impress with his starter of scallops with diced vegetables and fennel puree with a vermouth foam. Right, David, this, this looks really nice. I like the colours and I like the, uh, I like the presentation. It's, you, you've chosen to scatter this dice of vegetable across the plate, but it, but it does look nice. It looks elegant. I like it. Nicely seared scallops, well seasoned. Very good. Fennel puree works well, and the the sauce is good and creamy. It's lacking a little bit of acidity. The whole dish, it's seafood. It needs acidity. This is good cooking. It's showing off some very good skills, and and it's a leap forward for you. Thank you. Very well seasoned. The hint of aniseed through there as well. Nicely cooked scallop. Very good. I think you should be pleased with yourself. Thank you. I am. Thank you. Let's move on to the duck. For a place in the finals, David needs to maintain the high standard. With his duck breast with savoy cabbage and chestnuts, served with parsnip puree and parsnip fondants. You, you understand the shapes and the lines that are required in presenting a great plate of food. It's still nonetheless a little bit heavy. There's too much cabbage there, too much vegetable for the proportion of the meat. Okay. Your duck is well cooked and well seasoned. Cabbage is delicious and it's a really good accompaniment for this dish. It's well cooked. It's well presented. It just needs another dimension. I mean, I would gladly and happily eat this dish, but I don't think I would remember it for a long time. But that is the difference between a good dish and a great dish. I like that, mate. I do like that. The duck is soft. The chestnut in there as well, it gives it a really nice, chewy texture. I'd happily eat it all. Thank you. Well done. I think it went very, very well. Um, it, was, it was really, really good comments. Um, I feel like it was almost perfect comments. Um, and I'm really, really happy with what, what had just happened in there. Ryan wants to show creativity with his baked scallops with sea urchin butter and apple, garnished with snow pea and beetroot shoots, and served in a pan. Um, I like the presentation. 
I don't know whether we would serve this in a fine dining restaurant in a pan like this. But I'll, I'll give it one thing, though. It does look beautiful. Thank you. It looks really, really nice. Hopefully, if it comes out, yeah, it does. Lovely. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with it. I love the Queenie scallops. I love the urchin flavour. It's, it, it, it's the shoots. It, it's, they're strangely enough taking over. It's annoying. It's annoying because I think that could work without those beet shoots. Yeah, I think the beet shoots need to go. I think if you took those away, you've got something splendid, actually, because you get the sweetness of that scallop, but it hits that deep, fishy saltiness of that urchin butter that is absolutely delicious. And a little bit of sweet apple across the top is a stroke of genius. I didn't expect to get that sort of flavour combination in that little thing. Well done. Let's try your pasta. It's Ryan's last chance to secure a place in the finals with his dish of roasted butternut squash capolacci served with goat's curd, crispy sage and purple sage oil. I, I think you have managed to dress a dish of pasta in a very elegant fashion. A, a lot of care, a lot of time, a lot of attention has been put into this plate and it shows. Very good pasta, perfectly cooked. I love the stuffing. I love that roasted butternut squash puree underneath it. Full of flavour. Wonderful, wonderful flavours. I would wipe the plate clean. And that, that, is, that is definitely Michelin star quality pasta. Wow. Definitely. pasta is so light that you a couple of chews and the whole thing's melting on your mouth. Inside is sticky and sweet with a hint of garlic, salt from the parmesan. When you look down and realise how cheap all the ingredients are, mm. to get that amount of flavour is quite incredible. That is the secret of Italian food in the hands of somebody who understands it perfectly. You've had your food judged by Michel. He told you that was delicious and he would wipe the plate clean. It makes me undescribably uh, happy, to be honest. But it's, it's, I've got more, I've got more. All right, good. I went in there feeling like the underdog, um, so nervous uh, throughout the challenge, uh, but it seems to have paid off. The, the, the comments have been so positive and uh, both the judges said they would clear the food. So for me, this is a very good day. Well done. We asked you to step it up and my word, you have excelled. We now have a difficult judging decision to make. Off you go. Our two chefs today have shown how much they have learned from their Michelin star kitchen experience. The food they cooked for us today really proved that they have learned and they have taken on board and they have been inspired. David's starter of three scallops with that Fennel puree and vermouth sauce was really good. I enjoyed that. It was really well presented. It was clean lines, it was neat, it was tidy. I thought that was a delicious dish. It would have been very easy to overdo that on aniseed, but actually got the balance just right. The only thing that was missing on that dish was a little squeeze of lemon, and I'm being really difficult and panitticky about this. I really enjoyed that duck with the parsnip puree, cabbage and the sort of mealy chestnut. I thought that was delish. He can now do presentation, he can now do timing, and he still delivers flavour. It just needed a little tweak to lift it from very good cooking to excellent. He's almost there. He is within a whisker of being there. I feel really encouraged that they've said that my food's getting better. I've done my best, and if they're not happy with it, they're not happy with it, but I'd say that I've got a good chance. 
I'm impressed with Ryan. Very impressed with Ryan. Those little scallops with the bit of apple on and the urchin butter, I thought were delicious. And like all great food, it surprised me. I didn't expect those flavour sensations. I, I knew that was going to work, and it definitely did. For me, what didn't work were those shoots, especially the beet shoots. They left a very earthy taste in my mouth, which didn't work at all. For main course, very brave to give us just a pasta dish. But this wasn't just a pasta dish. This was a beautifully presented and perfectly cooked pasta dish. I mean, it's one of the best looking pasta plates I've ever seen. The little pasta parcels were cooked to perfection. The stuffing was delicious. Everything on that plate just worked. It was a wonder. I think the competition I was up against was very stiff and um, I think I've done well. Um, in terms of my performance, I think probably my best yet. This is, the, this is the problem I've got right now, is David, for me, has obviously got bags and bags of promise. I think that Ryan is the better cook right now. I think David may become a better cook. I like Ryan as a chef. I think he's neat, tidy, he's efficient, and he is a very skillful chef. However, David is learning so fast. He is picking up everything. Each round, he's giving us better and better and better. Where do we go from here? Two really good, passionate and skillful chefs. Well done, guys. Truly great effort. The chef going through to the next round. It's Ryan. Ryan, happy birthday. Well done, Ryan. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm gutted, but I've done, I've done well. I've done well to get this far. I've, I've done the best I could, but, you know, it's not good enough, <laughs> unfortunately. I am very proud of myself. I've shown people that I've got skills, I've got talent, and hopefully someone will see that in me. I am very, very happy to, sh to, sh to shock to best birthday present ever. You must have been able to feel my heartbeat then. So much work, so much work to do yet. I've still got to get to that finish line yet. What an achievement, so very happy. Ryan will be back to battle it out for the title of professional MasterChef.